I raise my eyes toward the mountains. From where will my help come from? This is the very first verse of Psalm 121. And the very first verse in and of itself is very telling of theology back in the time of King David. He says, I raise my eyes towards the mountains. Why does he raise his eyes towards the mountains? Because the mountains were considered sacred and holy places because they were the highest points of the earth uh, that connected to heaven. So it is believed that on particularly high mountains that territorial gods lived and reside and had their base of operations. I mean, we all know very well Greek mythology and Mount Olympus uh, where the uh, Greek gods congregated and made decisions and ruled and reigned from, what's well, kind of the same principle. Every every uh, territory, whether it be, you know, the Assyrians or the Moabites or the Ammonites or, you know, whatever ite you want to name, uh, in their territory, they usually had a very large mountain. And that mountain uh, would be sacred to that people's particular god. So, David here does what uh, or says what anybody would expect him to say. I raise my eyes towards the mountains. From where will my help come from? He's kind of alluding that, you know what? I'll raise my eyes to the mountains, but I don't see any gods coming to my rescue. Where will my help come from? My help is not going to come from these mountains and from the gods of these mountains. So where will my help come from? Verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which in English signifies the Hebraic personal name of God, which is spelled yud he vav he in the Hebrew. It's his personal name. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Not the maker of this land, not the maker of this territory, not the maker of this mountain, but the maker of heaven and earth, declaring that his God is the God above all other gods. God will, will not allow your foot to slip. Your guardian does not sleep. Truly, the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Now, a lot of these pagan deities had very human-like attributes. They were like superhumans. They were like humans with super uh, powers. And so they had uh, physical needs like other mortals. They needed to sleep. They needed to eat. Uh, they had desires to procreate. Um, the only exception is that they lived in another realm. They were more powerful uh, than human beings. They were considered gods. And this reminds me of the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal. You know, they were crying out to Baal. Baal wasn't answering them. And Elijah said, well, maybe he's sleeping. And even some translations in another part of that passage says, maybe he's using the bathroom. Maybe he's on the toilet. Making fun of the human characteristics and traits of their false god. But here, David declares, you know what? Other gods may be dependent upon sleep, but but my God, the God of Israel, he doesn't sleep and he doesn't. Uh, he has no need to slumber. Moving on, the Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. By day, the sun cannot harm you, nor the moon by night. See, the, the, the sun and the moon were attributed to pagan gods, pagan deities, uh, and that they were certain... Uh, false gods that ruled and governed the movements and the activity of the sun and the moon. And whenever anything odd would happen in the celestial heavens, it was considered a spiritual omen, whether good or bad, uh, a message from the gods, if you will. And David is saying, you know what? You don't have to worry about these false gods. You don't have to worry about signs in the moon or signs in the sun, what have you. Um, the Lord will guard you from all evil, will always guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and going, both now and forever. He will guard your coming and going because God rules the heavens and the earth. All the earth is his in the fullness thereof. He's not a territorial God. It's not like once you cross the border of this river, oh, that God that you were depending on back there can't help you anymore because he's stuck at the border. Uh, there's no need of that. It says the Lord will guard your coming and going, both now and forever, no matter where you go. So look, God. The one true God, the only God, the God of Israel, the maker of heaven and earth, is with you and is all-powerful. And he will conquer no matter what comes on in, into your path. Hey, 
Thanks for listening. Go out there and have a great day. God bless. Start your week out with a jolt. Join me, Chris Shoemaker, for the weekly Sunday morning jumpstart. Your Sunday sermon to start your week off right.